Hey everyone, and uh, welcome to chapter 9 lecture. This is a lecture on animations and effects. And so um, we learned a whole lot about jQuery real quick in chapter 8. And so now we kind of um, transition that into really what jQuery is good at, um, which is putting things onto the screen and taking things off of the screen in sort of... Um, you know, uh, instead of just popping onto the screen, there's more of a transition of something onto the screen. Almost think of like an effect, like a, a PowerPoint, you know, when something slides onto the screen or it fades onto the screen, you know. Um, so when I think of an effect, I think of almost like a PowerPoint-like uh, animation, if you will, of moving content onto the screen or off of the screen. Um, and then an animation is very similar to that, but animations are more custom. And so as you'll see when we get into animations, um, you can write your own custom transitions, if you will, of, of content onto the screen or off the screen or making things change its position and things of that nature. Um, and so hopping over the objectives, when we look at the different effects, what jQuery again is good at is making it real easy uh, to transition things onto the screen and off of the screen. And so, you know, they're just built in uh, methods. And so, to demonstrate these real quick, let's go ahead and link to a jQuery CDN so that this code works. Uh, let's see, of course there's the CDN from Google. And what I'm looking for is code.jQuery.com. Of course you could just type that in and copied to the text board. And so we've got some lorem ipsum and we've got a jQuery script. And let's write our own format that up. document.ready function dom loaded launch this in a browser and we got the jQuery document ready uh, good to go so so we're all set there and so jQuery is working to this point let's just put a fun little button on the page Don't click me, because of course if it says don't do it, you're going to want to do it. And we'll give this an ID of button submit. And let's wire up an event. Okay, so now we just have a little click event that when you click it, it says, hey, we got an event working. Okay. This paragraph, we'll give this paragraph an ID of demo, demo P. Let's target, when we click the button, let's target demo P and use one of these built-in functions like hide. Ooh. Again, <laughs> meh. Makes it nice and easy. Could we do that in JavaScript? Yes. 
Um, was there much of a transition there? No, it just makes it from display there to display hidden. So, so hide is a function that removes content. Of course, if we look through this, we can look at what about slide up. Again, just think of what might this do if this were PowerPoint. What would PowerPoint do? Slide up, case sensitive. A little bit more of a transitioning effect. That's nice. Slide up. What about fade out? Okay. Could we do this with JavaScript? Yeah, but if you think about what that's doing is that it's setting a timer and in some number of milliseconds, it's changing the opacity. So every so many milliseconds, it's changing the opacity from visible to not visible and to the point it disappears and then um, maybe a display none at the end. So it actually physically removes. One thing you'll notice about these transitions and these effects is that um, content does move around on the page like content um, this this button moves and so it content does shift around when you transition things on and off the page um, so that's that's all the things that remove content well then show is the opposite and so um, so show is the opposite of hide. Obviously we were doing hide earlier. Um, maybe, maybe that paragraph is hidden. Let's hide that paragraph. So demo P will be hidden when the page loads, and then we'll show it. Again, exactly what you would expect. Uh, we got slide up removes it, slide down. It's not there, slides down and then fade so i mean it's a it's an instant it's a slide and it's a fade um fade in okay um and then the third thing is a toggle so you'll notice there's a toggle there's a slide toggle and a fade toggle which will do both like a toggle does a both a show and a hide. So if I just do toggle, if it's not there, it'll show it, right? So, so toggle's really nice and it's the same thing. There's a slide toggle. Because a lot of times, you know, you're doing something on one event, mouse over, you do one thing, mouse out, you do another. You hide something on one, you, you display it on the other. Um, and then fade toggle, which is also a fade to, which is like, oh, fade to 50%. Here's your fade toggle. And then fade to, and if I'm not mistaken, um, 0.5 maybe it needs to be in quotes yeah that didn't work let's put it in quotes fade to 0.5 um, let me look at the documentation real quick on that one fade to oh it's because it takes two arguments you have to say how much time um, and so you'll notice here, fade to slow 0.5 seconds. So the first thing in, in a fade to is a speed, and you could do something different than the text speed. Um, and then after that, that's where you put not in quotes, the opacity. And 
and that's a one time it fades it to that opacity it's not like a toggle though we were just doing toggles but fade to is a one time function that, that sets it there so that worked that's why the, the documentation is your best friend Documentation is your best friend. You won't rem memorize all of this the first time through. Um, another thing you can do is uh, pass the number of seconds. And so um, you could pass a speed to any one of these. Like if I say, because it's hidden by default. So if I do a show and then you can pass it a duration which is what this slide, <clears throat> you give it the method name and then duration. Um, and so this is in milliseconds. And so if I say 5,000, it'll do, it'll take, um, five seconds to show really slow. So all of these functions that we just covered can take a speed. All of these can take a speed as their first parameter. Or, or like I did, I did not pass anything to them. I kept it empty. So this duration is optional. Um, and then this idea of a callback is also optional. I'm, I'm going to show you what a callback is um, in a little bit um, as a kind of a, since I brought it up, I'll, I'll tell you what it is a callback is a function to run after the method completes and so if you want to do the show and then as soon as the show is over do something else um, on the same on the same thing that you're selecting um, that's what a callback is And you can see that a callback is, is coded like down here with this anonymous function. Um, so they, they fade the startup message over five seconds. And then once that startup message is faded to um, 0.2 after five seconds, it runs this second function on the startup message. Um, and so the idea is that you're doing one effect after another once the first effect is completed, it continues with the second effect on the same element. And that's a key thing with these callback functions is it's kind of like a, kind of like chaining, if you will, one effect after another, um, but it's on the same element. If you're working with different elements, um, they will automatically wait for the prior one to finish. So again, you'll notice on all of these methods that I covered, they take two optional, uh, what are called arguments inside of the parentheses. The fade two has a duration an opacity and an optional callback. So fade two is required duration and opacity, but the callback is optional. You could see the, the uh, brackets here, make it optional. So both of these are optional. And then the fade two, the callback is optional. And so, you know, um, these effects really aren't overly complicated. I would say last chapter was a lot more complicated than this um, because they're just kind of built in and they work. Um, kind of out of the box like if you're just okay we're, we're targeting the startup message and we're fading it out over five seconds and then we're sliding it down over one second so you fade it out then you slide it down so it takes it out of view and then it puts it back into view right and and so we're getting um, like on this FAQs application they're getting uh, more effects onto the screen than before. Before it was just like, it popped up and then it went away like immediately. And now they can do like slide two and things like that. 
So here they're targeting every H2, and if you click the H2, um, it'll add or remove the, the, the class of minus. And then if the class of minus is not there, it fades out the next element over one second, otherwise it slides down the next element. So, pretty, pretty normal stuff for this textbook. Um, okay, so an effect is kind of like, a, again, I think of an effect as um, removing content or displaying content in more of a transitional, um, you know, something sliding onto the screen. Um, an animation, though, an animation is something that we're going to write with a function called animate. And so there's, there's more of a custom animation. Effects are built in in jQuery. Animations are custom. So effects are built in methods to jQuery. An animation in jQuery is a custom transition of content on or off the screen. Um, or content and or style. And so an animation can be, you know, taking uh, positioning, which is CSS, and moving something on the screen from one position into another. And so it can be um, you know, moving content or onto the screen, but also you can work with CSS and it's completely customizable. And then a callback function is typically an anonymous function that will run once an effect is completed. So, you know, the show shows up, the content shows up, and then once that's done, it runs an anonymous function, which runs after the effect is done. So that's your callback function. Okay, another demonstration here of uh, book code again I always recommend you try these out and this is just like a slideshow of transitioning images okay I'm gonna recommend on your own time maybe at the end of class today after this lecture you code these out um, they they actually give you two ways like if you look here one way to code the jQuery so slide 14 and 15 um, and then slide 16 and 17 would be uh, a second way. So you, you could kind of code the jQuery two different ways, achieve the same result, but you could see two different approaches. Um, again, jQuery is JavaScript, so you're still working with uh, JavaScript variables, you're still working with JavaScript uh, timers, intervals, and things of that nature. Um, what you'll do here is you'll you will wind up working with intervals, like you'll see in here. Um, we're still working with the set interval timer that comes from the JavaScript uh, DOM. Okay. So I did cover that kind of fast, all that information in 20 minutes, um, but I don't think these effects are all too hard. If you could understand what we covered in the last chapter, it's a little bit harder, but this is not quite as difficult because um, they, they do what they sound like they would do. Now, um, again, an animation, an animation is more of a custom, a custom uh, bit of code for changing what your, 
uh, what your page looks like or um, you know transitioning things on or off the screen and so it's done with the animate method so I don't uh, I don't think we have to do this much in this class let me rephrase that you won't do that a whole lot in this class because there are a lot of other tools so there's built-in effects to jQuery but there's also effect uh, jQuery effect plugins okay and what a plugin is so if you think of jQuery as a bunch of pre-written JavaScript, to simplify the task of writing JavaScript, you have jQuery. Well, to simplify the task of writing jQuery, you have plugins. Okay, so, so JavaScript simplified kind of makes, you know, jQuery makes JavaScript easier. And jQuery plugins makes writing jQuery easier. And so there's a lot, I mean, there's the number of possibilities for animations is endless you can customize any color any position any sort of you know the way things move around on the screen by changing its positioning it's it's an endless number of way that you can do things and so uh people came together and they made a jquery plugin for animations uh or, or effects and they're um, to me I'd rather use a jQuery plugin than write my own custom animations because other people are going to be more creative and make better animations than I would because I'm not all that artistic um, etc so the, but but I will cover how the animate method works again even though we don't use this a lot in this class so with the animate function uh, the first thing that you pass to it and you see these curly braces you notice the the brackets are optional if you remember that but the curly braces represent what's called um, a JavaScript object notation Okay, so JS, JavaScript, object, O, notation, N. So this is called uh, JSON. It's a JSON object. Okay, and so you can kind of see here uh, a little HTML and a little CSS. And then if we look at this animate function, the first thing that we do is we, we pass it JavaScript object notation. Basically, it's a set of curly braces followed by properties inside the curlies you have a property colon value so it's very similar almost to to CSS but then each each property is separated by a comma so instead of at the end of a Java uh, a CSS rule you have a semicolon in between each property value pair in this JSON object um, you just have a colon so you can write all of your CSS in CSS is font hyphen size but in JavaScript it's font size with a capital S so all of our CSS properties have a JavaScript equivalent but if there's a hyphen there instead of that we do camel casing and so what happens here in our callback function is it increases the font size it changes the opacity and it changes the left positioning to zero so let's just try this let me just try this animate again I don't do a ton of this um, but just to show you we can write our own custom animation we can we can have our paragraph and I'm gonna make it visible and when I click the button submit on demo P I'm going to dot animate and so curly braces if 
font size 300%. and comma over five seconds and let's see animate curly curly comma this is telling me I've got a syntax error but that's the end of click Wait a, wait a second, this is the end of ready. So my curly braces are lining up. Let me find my mistake animate parenthesis curly parenthesis curly property oh quotes font size quotes quote there it is okay you get the idea. If you get if you if you mess with this, I mean if you start thinking about all the things that we've learned, I'm sure you can make a, a pretty fun trolley little website, right? Where things are jumping around, changing colors. Um, the colors, speaking of colors, notice we're not messing with colors. Like right now we're just messing with font size. Let's put a comma, color, color. Pretty sure that's not gonna work. Yeah, colors, colors like that don't work. Um, And for that, there's a, there's another tool. We can get colors to work, um, but I mentioned getting um, I mentioned getting a plugin. I think that's required. Background color, color. Let's use let's use hex instead of red. RGB. Yeah. Um, somewhere in the back of my mind, I remember I remembered that animate on colors was not a, a straightforward thing like you might think, but it can work. And I'll. I'll get into these, like this is called jQuery UI, which is a plugin, and I'll, I'll show you how to work with jQuery UI to get color animations. Close, 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 minimize. That's the animate. Um, and then, again, the syntax of animate has an optional callback function on it as well. So it's all your CSS properties in that JSON object followed by a duration in milliseconds, followed by an optional callback function, again, that runs code at the end of that completing. So I think get a little, little bit more complex here. They, they run on the H1, they animate the H1, they increase the font size, make it visible, push its positioning over 175 pixels from the left. They do that over two seconds. And then once that animate is done, then they target that H2, the next element, so the sibling of the H2, fades in and then fades out. So it's just more or less showing um, a callback.
they show chained animations and so uh, you click the H1 you do this animation first and then chain another animation second so the animate functions are chained together Now, these would basically work in the same, same manner because you'll notice these are two animations that are chained together with dot animate, dot animate. This has two different selectors. Um, so we're selecting the H1 this, we're selecting the H1 this. Instead of here, we're selecting this one time and anim doing chains. This is actually more efficient, the chained animations, than the queued animations. Again, they, they achieve the same task, but why the chained animations is better is that every time you run a selector, like here we're selecting the H1 twice, and here we're selecting the H1 once, there's a little bit of overhead in selecting part of your HTML. So if you can select things less, using jQuery, that's more efficient than selecting the same thing twice. And so again, pretty much achieving the same task, but this one's slightly more efficient and preferable over the queued animations. And then they show this even a slightly more complex with the callback functions. The one thing I will say about callback functions is that the more of them that you get, the more complex the code mm, syntax is. Um, because you'll notice we animate, here's your JSON object, here's your two seconds, here's your callback function. Inside of your callback function, then we're then animating um, the next piece. And so again, really three ways of doing the same thing um, you know, again, my preferred is just using chain animations on this top one. Okay, guys, um, I wanted to kind of do a, a little dem another demonstration um, to kind of show you a little bit more about. Um, callback functions and so um, all I have here is you know my click event for my button and I've got my paragraph which um, is by default on the page I'll make another paragraph second demo paragraph with some lorem ipsum Okay, so we got two paragraphs, and when I click the button, I'm going to target my first paragraph, demo P. Um, slide up is going to remove it off of the page. And so this is where this is where you might get some unexpected behavior. Uh, this is, they're both IDs, so I need to do that. So we're telling, on this click, we're sliding both of them off the screen. And what happens is it does it at the same time. And so a lot of times you don't want that to happen. Maybe you want the first one to slide off, and then once that one finishes, you slide off the second one. And that's where the callback function comes into play that instead of run, writing one right after the other, you could say, okay, we'll do this uh, over five seconds. And then here's your callback function. And then in there, we're going to target
And so now we kind of have this where it'll finish one So right now it's just sliding the first one off. Now that's done. I must have made a mistake with my ID. Let's refresh. So it finishes one effect and then does the second one. And so that's kind of the point, if you will, behind a callback function is it waits for one effect to finish before beginning the next. And that's that's what happens on um, two different elements. Okay. Um, if you if you select two different elements, if you're talking about selecting the same element, then you actually don't need to do a callback function because you would just slide it up. Now we're targeting the same thing, but it's the same element instead of two different ones. Because if it's the same element, what happens is um, it, it cues it. So it does one, and then it waits for that first one to finish, and then it starts the second one. So these effects are essentially put in a queue um, when you're working with one element. And it waits for the first one to finish, and then it starts the second one. And so the reason I talk about a queue is because that's what we're getting into here in a second. Um, if you look at there's a delay, which this delay is kind of like your pause. It says delaying the start of the next animation in the queue. And so you can put a delay on there. kind of waits for five seconds so there's your delay and then it starts the next one so you had to understand first off that there is a queue on an element if it's the same element you know and you got a bunch of effects one right after the other then then it's essentially a queue of time one one thing right after the other and then there's a delay which can wait for that um, and then there's a stop method, and then there's a finish method. Something in my eye. Um, you can kind of read there's a small difference between the two. Um, the stop method stops the current animation. So if you're like sliding up over five seconds, you could stop that animation and then if the first parameter is set to true the queue is cleared if the second parameter is set to true the current animation is completed immediately and so um, let me read that one more time if the first parameter is set to true the queue is cleared if the second parameter is set to true, the current animation is completed completely. So you got two options in there. The first is to clear the queue. And so you would say true. And then if you clear the, the queue, it's not going to do any of this. Let's just do a stop true. Actually, it doesn't do any of it because it clears the queue for actually all three of these. 
So stop true. Let me make sure that didn't break anything. Got that written right. Yeah. If the second parameter set to true, the current animation is completed immediately. So let's let's do false comma true. False true. So what happened was the slide up that happens over five seconds, it didn't clear the queue, but it did finish immediately the slide up. And then it delayed five seconds and then it slid it back down. So the, the queue was not cleared. It stopped that individual transition and then resumed with the rest. So that's stop. And then finish um, doesn't give you quite as many options, it seems. Finish stops the current animation for the selected element, clears the queue, and completes all the animation for the elements. Okay. They show you an example of a delay. Probably the most useful thing there is the delay. Um, and what you can get here, if you, if you code out this example from the book, is that you can get multiple elements kind of doing their own animations and so lots of moving pieces on the page um, in which case when that happens um, that's where you might want to use stop if you got a bunch of things bouncing all over the page um, you could use a stop so that the other elements stop moving and you um, just move the the one element that you're hovering over Instead of having a bunch of things that are bouncing all over the page. Okay. So callback function, a callback function is a new thing that we haven't seen before. Um, so that's a, that's a new term that I demonstrated how to run a callback function. Again, it's something like this, right? Demo P dot slide up five seconds, comma, function. This is an anonymous function called a callback function right here. And in here, so just as a reminder, even though I just did this, demo P2. Fade out over three seconds. You could have another callback function. It could keep going. I think the problem is that I need a third paragraph. Because what I'm doing is I'm selecting this inside of here, which doesn't really make sense. I need a third paragraph. All right, I'm just reviewing callback functions real quick.
but he just doesn't like my Oh gosh. Good eye. It's the benefit of when I write code. Um, got the people there. So that's two callback functions. Um, another new term that we have not had before is easing um, and easing is so the idea of like imagining something tr sliding down onto the screen um, easing is the idea that it just happens at a, a steady speed like kind of one steady speed the whole time um, instead you know, you could think of it as the speed of the transition at different points of the transition. So maybe it, it starts fast and then slows down or, or slow, fast, slow. So you could think of easing as the speed of the transition of uh, the speed of the transition of the effect. It's getting to be colder outside so I'm turning on the heater in my basement or not my heater won't turn on I'll f figure that out later So all of the methods that we've covered, we did not, so far we've had a duration, which is like five seconds. And then you can see here, there's an optional easing option that we haven't talked about. We have talked about the callback. So it goes duration, then easing, then callback. Uh, so, the thing about easing is that there's only a couple of built-in easing methods um, there is however an easing plugin for you to use and so you get a lot of different um, sort of again speeds of transition using these easing plugins and so let me let me kind of demonstrate this easing plugin Go to jQuery.com and then this tab here is for jQuery UI and that's where you'll find easing. And so kind of built in, um, there's linear easing. So this is like a, a slide up and a slide down using linear. And then there's swing, which is, again, these are built into So it's kind of really hard to see. It's very minimal difference. And so you can see linear is more um, con consistent, um, whereas swing, it might start off a little slower, then speed up in the middle, then finish a little slower. But it's really hard to see. It's very minimal. It's it's like you, you basically you don't touch easing unless you're using a plugin. Um, and so these are these are the ones that are built in. But that's not this is not the easing plugin that I'm looking for. Um, this is jQuery easing. So let me Google it real quick. jQuery easing.
Let me see if this is uh so here's a bunch of here's a bunch of the names of all the easing effects. And so these are for the ease out quad. And so you kind of get this bouncing effect. And so you can kind of see you get these different you can kind of get an idea of what's going on here but it's a little bit easier to to demo them uh, for example you target slide up over one second then you would put the name of the easing effect right here and then that would be that would essentially be it um, here's your well let's let's copy this from the slideshow here's your CDN for the easing plugin copy and you'll notice you you must do that after the jQuery link and so in my code here's our link to jQuery that didn't copy very well let's clean that up It does not like that copy and paste. Oh. Oh. I see. Again, benefit having other people watch your code. There we go. So now let's target demo P. Demo P dot slide up over five seconds. And now we can E add one of these easing effects like ease out ease out quad with a capital O and a an capital Q and that comes after the time it's been a long morning guys good catch So if we just remove this, let's we'll see that it's working. Okay, comma, ease out quad. Refresh. All right, pausing the recording. We've solved the mystery. Uh, getting to the end of the day, so I'm making silly mistakes. Uh, the easing effect takes quotation marks and I did not have quotation marks and so I simply added quotes around ease in bounce and I think originally it was ease out quad 
And so now you run it and you click it and instead of just transitioning off the screen, you get a different effect. The bounce was a little bit neater. Ease out, bounce. A little bit more of an effect when you're bouncing around. So it kind of bounces in, bounces out. And again, depending on what this is, this could be paragraphs, images, you know, you could you could transition things on or off the page in a more, uh, you know, fun, fun and fancy way. So that's easing. And again, there's a bunch of built-in easing effects. And you can do easing along with uh, callbacks, and it can actually get quite um, complex. Okay, that's really what you need to know for this chapter. Um, the rest is pretty much just code examples. I'm going to stop the PowerPoint there.